this week's Cardiology Countdown will begin uh, in San Francisco with an analysis of the SF Activate registry that looked at STEMI activation to see what percentage of patients were uh, sent to the cath lab but were false positives, and that is not found to have a culprit lesion. Interestingly, over a three-year period, they found out of about 450 or so activations, over a third were found to be false positives. And uh, patients who had LVH or cocaine use, and interestingly, a history of coronary disease, uh, increased the likelihood um, of being a false positive. And so this is uh, obviously extra work for the cardiology teams in San Francisco, but likely across the country, and uh, will hopefully help refine the, the uh, clinical characteristics that would um, activate the cath lab as opposed to uh, doing other testing. At the number two spot is an interesting analysis in JAMA that looks at the uh, risk of stroke of women versus men. And as has been seen with many other diseases, in atrial fibrillation, the risk of stroke was higher in women. Now, in part in this uh, registry of uh, nearly 40,000 patients in Quebec, um, that um, the um, prevalence of other risk factors was higher, such as higher age and history of uh, congestive heart failure in women. But even when correcting for that, there was about a 14 or 15 percent higher risk of stroke in women. And so another thing for us to be on the lookout in the high-risk uh, population to try and optimize uh, therapy for them. And these findings were despite use of warfarin. And so as we consider the newer agents, could we have uh, gender as part of um, a strategy that we keep in the back of our minds as to who are the high-risk patients? And at the number one spot are new prevention guidelines from the ESC. The, there's a very nice uh, document with lots of color-coded tables that walks through everything from risk assessment, where they use the SCORE assessment, but recommend use of uh, that uh, clinical-based thing. Other biomarkers have all the evidence laid out for uh, their support. And then all the therapies for long-term treatment. They adopt the target of less than 70 uh, milligrams per deciliter for LDL uh, for patients with established coronary or vascular disease. Um, and then less than 100 uh, for those who have multiple risk factors and, and known cardiovascular risk. Um, there are also recommendations where they give preference to the stronger P2Y12 inhibitors over clopidogrel since they've been shown uh, to have better outcomes, um, although obviously balance that with bleeding. Uh, and then they get into a lot of the mechanics of how to provide uh, preventive care and to set up systems to involve um, nurse practitioners and other healthcare professionals to help in the education. Uh, to a call to action for cardiologists to be preventive uh, cardiologists and really work hard at all this. Obviously involve lifestyle interventions, encourage cardiac rehab when appropriate, um, and encourage governments to get involved in trying to help on the prevention side. So a really terrific guideline. Encourage everyone to take a look at it. So for this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.